to get back into serious crime, Sean. Oh. For uh, no, I just I says fuck it. I get back into serious crime, and uh, I, I went to the, the I went to the, well, the the good things in life. Not anyway, yeah. but I was taking a big chance because I could have got another 15, 16 years. So I get back into serious crime, and I was successful for five years, mm. and I went all around the world. I went around uh, Thailand, uh, Saint Lucia. Got a girlfriend. I bought her a penthouse flat. I bought myself a big flat. Uh, car, I had a car. I was gonna about I was a wee bit of a show off then. When I got married, I had a car and I had the uh, blink a blink registration. That's my nickname. And I was gonna about and when I first put this registration number on, people were phoning me up and going, "By the way, people in Glasgow are saying you've got blink on your thing with car." And I said, "Is that right?" They went, "Did you make it up?" And I says, "Don't be silly." I says, "I bought it." I had this, uh, I had this, this car, this car registration number for about a year. Then I just put it on when I had a bit of trouble in it. So after five and uh, all the headlines are like blink, <laughs> blink, and he's gone. <laughs> Gangster jets, the cost of Dilson. David Twitter thing me talk about David Beckham there. I swear, after. Uh, after about five and a half year, I think I'd learnt th these places you're in the jails are university universities really a crime. So you try and learn how not to get caught. And uh, so I had about a five and a half year run in in organised crime, and uh, I became in a gangland war in Glasgow. Upset these people. Told them the new kids in the block. They thought I was an old guy when I came out, and this is right. So I'd done something, and a year later, people kept saying to me, The comeback's coming, the comeback's coming. I said, And I was getting these letters for the police, Osmonds, uh, threatening to leave things. So in May 2009, and Danny Dyer, they were going to do a programme on me and it was called Danny Dyer's Deadliest Men. Mm. So there was a cameraman up and another guy up. They were up for a couple of, couple of days and they were start filming me. And Danny Dyer was to come up to my flat up at the Hugging Field Lock. It was a penthouse flat and everybody knew about it. And the whole of Glasgow had to come up to the flat. They says, when Danny Dyer comes up, can we come up? Because because he goes and stays with people in this program, mm. and uh, he was going to stay with me for two days. Thought he wouldn't have no let you sell in for. <laughs> so before he came up, Friday, I think it was Friday the ninth of May, two thousand nine. There was a bomb found under my car, and I, I knew nothing about it. A neighbour had just come back for. Las Vegas, the woman went down the stair in my state and she jet lag and she did the light out and she was she was watching this car park and her car drew up, two guys came out with hoods on. But she couldn't see my car, there was a van blocking it. So she phoned the police and she says, I think she didn't think anything of a bomb nature, anything sinister like that. She just thought that somebody was trying to steal a car. So the police came about five in the morning mm. and uh, they checked. No, I can't see nothing. And uh, she still wasn't convinced and her man went out in the morning, Adam. And uh, he he went and looked under my car and he's rang my bell. And I wouldn't answer it. I thought it was the police. The police were hounding me by this time. And uh, he's shouting at me and it's me. And I looked to it and he says, look, let me in. They came up. He says, there's something under your car. Just a couple of months before it, there was a tracking device put under one of my pal's cars, my guy Star Keenan, and he found it. So they were kind of a, the police were right on it at the time. And so were these other gangsters. So I was in a war with uh, Strathclyde police and Glasgow gangsters. And what happened was after the bomb on the Friday, Danny Ryan and all that, they, they, they just went like that. They says, look, 
we're finishing, we're finishing this film. It says it's becoming too heavy. Too crazy. It's too, too crazy, but it's, it's about deadliest men. They says, Ian, this was about your uh, past life. No, no, about your your, your present them. life, and I, and I says to the, I says to this young director guy, I says, I says keep the cameras rolling. I says, mate, I says I'm going to war here. I says, I don't uh, want to get blown up. <laughs> I, I, say, I, I says, make yourself a name, and he went no. So I says, dirty shite bags, Danny Dyer. So they fucked off. So the Tuesday, the the cops, the thing, the the bomb squad, and all that came up. They evacuated. 14 houses for about 16 hours and this device was made safe I get told that if it went off it would have took half the building off so you're saying so, Danny dies a shit house yeah I says a dirty shite bag I says dirty shite bag you know what I mean <laughs> send one of you so, uh, so uh, what happened then in the Tuesday I would have done the same Danny <laughs> so well, I says, the Tuesday I was uh, walking my dog in the park, there was a park near me, and uh, my mother was drew back for Benidorm. I says, I'll take a walk and see my mother. My mother, the police still had my car, the forensics. So my mum was only five minutes from the corner, and uh, I saw this car kind of following me, and I went, something's not right here, it's a bit strange. But I, I just, I never gave it a thought. And I went by Arthur Thompson's house, uh, who I've mentioned before, the Godfather of Glasgow. Godfather of Glasgow, I was yeah. only a minute past his house, and uh, I just turned a corner, and I felt, fuck you. And I got up with a knife, and I went flying. And the next minute, there was three guys going, come on. And I'm stunned, going, who the fuck are they three? And they says, come on, you're supposed to be a gangster in uh, Glasgow. And they psychologically defeated me. And uh, I was I was walking backwards, and they, they didn't know if I had anything on me. I never had anything, because I thought the police were still watching because of this bombing up. And uh, anyway, they had a fight with them. I could have ran. My mother said it was only a minute away. I've never ran away in my life. And uh, they got me down, and they got me down in this church gate, and one of them was lying on my legs, and they were trying to cut my throat up. And managed to they got this scar here. And uh I walked through the corner and I, I, I was laughing. I to be honest, I was laughing. I says, fucking idiots. I says, if it was me, I says I just fucking came from the back and bin them. So I says, I says amateurs. So there was kids playing in the street and that. And uh the came on and gave us a tail. Half it, it looks no bad now, but half of my face was hanging off. It was quite bad. And uh, I went to hospital, and I was in hospital for the Tuesday to the Thursday, plastic surgery, got my card back. I says, right, I'm going to fucking war here. And uh, I was trying to find out who was behind us. And then the Friday, me and my pal were up in my flat, and six CID came up. And uh, I thought they were up to see about the bomb or me being slashed. And they says, Ian, we're up to arrest you. And I says, you're up to arrest me? I says, what for? They says, well, tell me down to the station. I says, wait a minute, I thought I was a victim here. But I thought they, they'd, they'd maybe found something that I'd been saying, that a conspiracy to murder or something to get these people back. But when we got down to the police station, they were like, oh, it's for a breach of the peace. I says, a breach of the peace? And they wanted me to me do a, 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 a taped interview comment. I says, so, you're, so what's the breach of the peace? And it was for a nightclub for three weeks before where I was shouting outside and all that. And uh, they, they'd went to the nightclub and they got the manager and uh, some of the bouncers. They were put up to it, by the way, with some of my rivals to say this, to get me off the streets. So the bombing was the Friday, slashed the Tuesday, got out of the hospital on the Thursday, arrested on the Friday, so I thought that was the end of my troubles. And the, Saturday, the, the, the Sunday morning, four CID come up and they were running up to see me how my health was or uh, to take me to church. They says to me, listen in your petrol bomb, uh, your car just got petrol bombed last night. And I says, where the fuck were you? And they just went, they went, listen, we says, we don't want a gang war starting. And I went, it's fucking already started. They went, what? I says, it's fucking already started. 
I says, I'm no backing down to these people. And uh, I went to court on the Monday and they had me on this petition. It was a higher kind of a, usually a breach of the peace, a three month, six month, a fine or something. So they had me on this indictment thing, what they call it in Scotland. So my lawyer says, this is a joke. So when we got to court, the prosecutor was a young woman and uh, she started shouting, this man's got a terrible record, he's been done at the old Bailey, he's done for a gun. Then she made a blunder and she went, he's also involved in the gang land war just now. And the sheriff, my lawyer's ready to jump up and the sheriff just went, I'll talk to you later. She shouldn't have said that. Know what I mean? And uh, then my lawyer stood up and says, yes, he's got a terrible record, blah, 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 blah. But she's just went and says, this man's involved in the gangland war. Where's she getting this for? Newspapers. And, uh, and the judge went, not a problem, bail. So I got in bail and I went back up to my flat, up the penthouse flat. And the neighbours had all saw me get arrested. They went, did you get arrested with a gun or something? And I says, no. I says, uh, I says, they've done me with a breach of the peace for three weeks ago. And uh, so, so that, that was me. And no, that, no long after that, everything just crumbled. Every, everything I was up to, I had, I had to stop. The police were right on me. And I knew I was going to get another 15 year. Just oh, to man. verify all this, we got the news headlines, plot to blow up, gangster blink, just don't blow up. The motor. <laughs> this is um That's a way back. Yeah. yeah. Back in two thousand and nine. Nine, yeah. Wow. Nice. So uh run about that time, two thousand and nine, May June. And the cop I was still up to everything, but the coppers were right on me in Glasgow. And I just decided to wind down my criminal activities. 